Hi, hello folks, this is Nate here. And uh, today I want to talk to you guys about my reintroduction to the Humble Cassette. Now, I remember these from my days back in the early 90s and it was just a default uh, recording and playback format that was used at that point. And once CDs came along, you know, they sounded better and all the functionality, you know, I kind of, uh, I guess the world moved on from these. Um, however, a few months ago, I uh, ran across a, a YouTube channel by a fella go by the name of Ted Moan. And the channel discusses uh, vintage uh, formats and uh, devices. And a big part of the channel is cassettes. So, you know, it, it intrigued me and, uh, you know, I wanted to kind of get back into the whole uh, cassettes, you know, making my own mixtapes and playing them back and, and such. So, long story short, went on Amazon, got this nice shoebox style cassette player. I got this because it has a line in, line out. So this, in principle, you should be, I should have been able to make my own recordings and gone on my merry way. However, this definitely lived up to the reviews. It um, it works. It does what they tell you it does. You know, you could record and play back. However, the sound quality is terrible. And um, doing more research on this and uh, why, you know, what's going on here. Uh, essentially the components in there are just not that great and if you want um, good quality playback with cassettes uh, the only way to achieve that today is you get an older uh, player from the 80s and 90s and those work a lot better and I did that I got uh, an old uh, Pioneer from the I think, late 80s and uh, you know the sound quality obviously is a lot better than this and uh, but I'm not here to discuss this particular deck today. Um, what I also did was I got um, one of these uh, Grace tape to USB machines uh, because you know I really wanted something a little bit more modern, and I didn't really want to think about you know having to do any major refurbishing. I want to see how good this um, something like this sounds now. I like this because it, uh, unlike this uh, shoebox type um, uh, player there, it's designed really to only deal with tapes. There's no Bluetooth, there's no ability to play um, MP3 through a USB. It's just tape playback and recording functionality. Now, I said modern, but this is actually, I believe these, uh, they stopped producing this probably like somewhat 10 years ago, uh, which is okay because I found a, um, uh, you know, factory in China, which still has this listed in the catalog, and I tried getting a few uh, samples made. Uh, however, on, unless I was going to order about 500 to 1,000 units, you know, they clearly weren't uh, interested in doing a, a production run in that case. Hey, if anybody's interested in um, also purchasing one of those, let me know. Maybe start a petition with a with a factory. But anyway, there's some nice features with these things. Um, for example, it plays Type 1 and Type 2, which is very rare on uh, on this newer model tape decks, especially one that's, uh, I guess, you retail price less than $100 at the time. And, um, you know, it has actually a uh, jacks in the back. And, um, you know, more importantly, the the set mechanisms of this is pretty decent. I mean, you get a, a, a Mabushi motor, which are, you know, nice uh, met metallic flywheels. And, uh, you know, the smooth operation of these uh, very analog, uh, you know, controls, tape controls. And, um, you know, this is, this is pretty good uh, for what it is, for the cost, right? Uh, so, got it. You know, so now how does it sound? Which is an important part. And um, so, I have to end up getting two of them because this one, according to the cell on... Um, the YouTube had a, a, a hiss, which is a, to be expected in something uh, this quality. Um, however, there was a hiss and there's also a hum. Now, the hum is not expected. The hum is due to some electronic noise, something wrong with the board. And I opened it up, and uh, sure enough, uh, you know, there's a lot of oxidation on the board. And the only way this happens is if this was probably submerged in water. Some water got in there and whatnot. So, you know, I like the, I like, uh, you know, the, 
the form factor I, I like it. So I got another one uh, off of eBay again, and um, this was twenty five dollars though. Brooklyn, this was forty five dollars, but it came with uh, it's almost brand new. So it came with all the you know everything, the adapter, the CD, and the USB cables even. So I got it and uh, you know tested it out. It, the sound quality wasn't bad on it, so. I tested recording and playback on, on, on both on uh, type one and type two tapes, and those worked fine. However, because these things was intended really to digitize cassettes, you know, the noise, the hiss, and some electronic noise didn't, you know, that's not really the focus on these things. So I was thinking of ways, you know, to how can you improve that with, uh, and what I ended up doing was getting one of these, uh, uh, board. These are called dynamic noise reduction boards. And um, some of the new tape decks, the high-end tape decks being produced now, now they have this um, uh, technology in there, or these ICs in there. And what they do, they get rid of the tape hiss. And I was actually surprised that using type 1 um, uh, tapes, it definitely gets rid of uh, you know, almost all the hiss. It, it's gone. More importantly, it gets rid of this, some of the electro, electronic noise that's, I guess, inherent to this type of uh, uh, lower cost uh, tape that these days. And it works. All you do, you put it in line with um, from the RC output, and you connect it between the RC output and your speaker. And again, almost all the hiss is um, eliminated. Now, uh, comp compared to the my old Pioneer deck. With a Type 1 tape, you could still tell the difference between this uh, with the DNR and the Pioneer. Pioneer sounds, just, you know, sounds better. However, with Type 2 tapes, you really can't tell the difference. Oh, the Type 2 tape in this and the dynamic noise reduction circuit activated, it sounds the same as the old Pioneer deck. Now, that's not saying much because I'm sure uh, the old Pioneer deck needs to be serviced. Maybe some of the capacitors needs to change out, belts need to um, be replaced, and uh, need to do a better job of cleaning the heads. But it shows some um, potential for uh, these type of um, cassettes if you implement um, additional noise reduction technology. And this is where my interest lies. You know, my goal is, you know, with the project is simply to take a uh, cassette like this. You know, with this type of mechanism, which are produced today, and combine it with um, you know these microcontrollers. And now, why would you do this? It's simple. With these type of mechanisms, you you could only get so much out of them. The sound quality and all that, the frequency response and any of that. If you want to get a modern tech player, which sounds good, and comes in at a price retail price for enough say less than a hundred dollars you have to go with modern technology this you know, microcontrollers to do all the digital signal processing and that would eliminate the tape noise it would also could, could also you know enhance the sound and um, allow you you know you could also add other functionality to make better recording I mean this uh, board with a nice four inch touch screen it's cost sixty dollars so to add this into uh you know old type into this uh newer type take this it's not gonna add much to the device cost but it would just sound so much better now obviously that um it, it you know if you're purist then you're like oh this wow no way and and you know you can't do this however if uh, you if folks really want um, cassette uh, cassettes to make a real comeback, you have to have uh, devices which sound much better than the thirty dollar, forty dollar um, machines you could buy off Amazon. But doesn't cost uh, five hundred dollars like the TX systems you find on Amazon, and it's not an old system which you need to get refurbished. You know, the, I, you know, if you want to hit a price for say hundred dollars for someone's new set, or just want something that sounds decent, I mean, if, even if you use DSP with one of these mechanisms, it will never sound as good as some of the old um, cassette decks. Uh, however, it just has to sound good enough so someone new to cassettes would would, would be willing 
to give the format a try and not get turned off immediately as it would if um, you know they bought something like this or similar boom boxes on Amazon and then uh, expect uh, to hear at least decent quality and then it you know quality of the sound is, is so terrible and yeah, they're left wondering why would anyone why would they even sell this um, what's the big deal with cassettes so this is my take on things you know I have um, you know next video I'm gonna look at um, you know using the VHS steps to make higher quality recordings and I will take a look at the Pioneer deck and go into a little bit more details on that all right that's it for today folks uh, hopefully uh, you know if you like this video leave a comment and let me know your thoughts on you know using modern microcontrollers to implement uh, DSP with uh, on cassettes to bring the song levels up to uh, what they close to what they should be right